As we gather this morning to celebrate the Eucharist, we hear in our gospel passage from St. Mark, Jesus sending the apostles out on a missionary journey. And in their journey, they are to preach repentance, metanoia, conversion of heart. I've always been fascinated by this reading, fascinated on what Jesus told them to take with them on their journey. He says to them, take nothing for the journey, no food, no sack, no money in your belts, not a second tunic, you can wear sandals, but he says, when you go on this journey, take a walking stick. A walking stick. <laughs> a wooden pole. And I've always asked myself, how is this wooden pole, this walking stick, going to help them on their journey of preaching repentance? And then I remembered what one of my professors in the seminary told us as we were studying the sacred scriptures. He said, when you read the scriptures, especially the Gospels, don't be content with just looking at the surface level of what you read, the obvious words that are written. He said, no, always try to look beyond, go deeper, for there's oftentimes symbolism in the words that talk about a divine reality. So I took those words to heart, and I asked myself, is a walking stick symbolic of something else that Jesus wanted to share with his apostles? And as I went on through my reflection this past week, I asked myself, what are ways that people use a walking stick in their life? And I came up with five. People oftentimes use a walking stick to steady them on their journey. Now, you and I, we're used to nice, soft, or straight and level sidewalks to walk on, or the golf paths to walk on. But back in the time of Jesus, they were little paths and trails, oftentimes filled with rocks and boulders and all sorts of things. And so you needed a walking stick to keep yourself steady on the way, lest you fall. Another way that people use a walking stick, especially when they're, they're like climbing a hill or a mountain, is to sort of lean on the stick and rest a while to catch your breath. A third way that people use a walking stick is as a probe. You know, as they're getting ready to crawl, you know, climb over a log, they sort of put their, their walking stick ahead to see if there's anything there that might hurt them. Or if they find a cave and they think, well, I might sort of sit in there for a while and rest, they, they might poke and probe to see, is there anybody else in the cave or something else in the cave that I don't want to sit with? The fourth way that people can use a walking stick is as a pointer to give direction. Yeah, just go down that way about a mile and you're going to reach the village. And finally, the fifth way that people can use a walking stick is for protection, to defend themselves against a wild animal or a robber. You just sort of hit them with it. And so a walking stick can be used to steady oneself, to rest on, to probe, to point, and to protect. Now with those concepts in mind, I thought, as Jesus sent his disciples off on this missionary journey to proclaim repentance, what about Jesus did he want the disciples to take with them, symbolized by that walking stick? And I came to the conclusion that the walking stick is symbolic of the words of Jesus, which you and I call the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Think about it. 
the words of Jesus can be that steadying element in our lives when our lives are being tossed and turned about. Don't be afraid. I am with you, Jesus says. The words of Jesus, the gospel of Jesus, can be what you and I can rest upon and lean upon when our life is filled with burdens and worries. Come to me, Jesus says, all you who will find life burdensome, and I will give you rest. The words of Jesus can probe the depths of our hearts to help us discover what we believe and why we do what we do and say what we say. Whatever you do to the least of my brothers or sisters, Jesus says, you do unto me. The words of Jesus, the gospel of Jesus, can point us to the kingdom of heaven. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me, Jesus says. And finally, the words of Jesus can protect us and defend us against the workings, the temptations of the devil. Beware of people in sheep's clothing, but inside are ravenous wolves. So the words of Jesus is what he sent his disciples with as they went out to, me- to preach a message of forgiveness. And it's the words of Jesus, the gospel of Jesus, that you and I need today in the world in which we live to keep us steady on our journey, to be able to lean on and rest upon in our trials and tribulations, to reflect in the depths of our heart what life is all about, what Jesus wants us to do with our life in word and in action. That with the words of Jesus, not only do we find ourselves pointed to the kingdom of heaven, but we can point others in that same direction. And finally, the words of Jesus, the gospel, is always there to protect us, to defend us, to be our safeguard against the evils of the world today. And so as you and I gather this morning to celebrate the liturgy of the 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time, Let us thank God, our Father, for speaking his word, and the word became flesh. Let us thank Jesus, the word made flesh, for sharing with us his words of peace and love and mercy and forgiveness that we find in the Gospels. And finally, let us ask the Holy Spirit to help us use the words of Jesus as our walking stick through life. So that together, graced by the presence of Jesus, strengthened by the words of Jesus, inspired by the presence of Jesus, we may walk together to the kingdom of our Father.